Ready to be fed her mouse. Hope she's in the mood. Hey. Okay. Little mouse. Ooh, she usually starts hissing and getting grumpy. Oh, she's a cobra. Oh, you're such a cobra. Come on. Come on. Oh, she's such a cobra. So if you tease him a little bit, like. Well, maybe I do want that after all. It's getting away. It's getting away. Whoops, you missed. Try again. Just don't hit me instead. I think in the wild you might die. You're not very good at this. There you go. Nom 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 nom. Nom 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 nom. There you go. Come on, honey. Oh, it's it's struggling. It's struggling. Better eat it. Hey, I've got uh, a two for two getting them to go for the head today. Hognose snakes like to grab them by the side so they don't miss the catch. And then they have to work their jaws around to one end or the other. Hopefully it's the uh, head end because it's much easier to swallow it. That's kind of why I put the head basically in her mouth because it's a uh, it's a lot easier for her to swallow, and then that way it doesn't take too long for it to go down. I'm trying to get some weight on her. Uh, she's been getting longer and longer, but I want some girth on her before she goes into brumation this year. Um, she sh we should still have a, about a month at least until they want to go into brumation, I hope, because uh, I want to get some more weight on her than she has before that. But uh, as you can see, uh, snakes have really stretchy, stretchy skin. And on their lower jaw, in the front, there is a ligament that holds that uh, front jaw together and that goes all springy, springy. So they can open their mouth really wide. Uh, if you've heard that snakes can unhinge their jaw, that's not correct. What they can do is use that stretchy, stretchy front ligament on the lower bottom jaw on the front to open up very wide and eat very large prey if they need to. Um, the ones I've seen who can open up the largest are like pythons. They can swallow some really big critters. She has hinged rear fangs. She's uh, mildly venomous. Uh, I've been bitten by them but when they've mistaken me for a mouse, if I had mouse smell on my hands or whatever, or if they were in food mode. And uh, it really doesn't cause that much of a problem in people. It didn't even hurt really any more than any other colubrid bite would. It was no big deal. Although some people have had some pretty amazing uh, reactions to it. I've seen people with their fingers and hands pretty swollen from a hog nose bite. But that is the exception rather than the rule. In fact, uh, Elmo had a pretty good hold on me and probably got a lot of that uh, mild venom into the wound I had. And not a nothing. It just bled profusely because there are anticoagulants in the venom and sometimes saliva of snakes. So if you get bitten by a non-venomous snake, sometimes even though the wound is super shallow and it doesn't hurt, it'll bleed like if somebody stuck you with a stiletto. It's uh, pretty incredible. So I'm going to try to hang on to her tail so you can watch the swallowing process. They tend to want to retreat as soon as they have their prey 
cats are a little shy. She's always such a drama queen when I first open up her container. She is a cobra mimic. Uh, that's her go-to, is the cobra move. Uh, and uh, so she pretends to be a cobra. She flattens out that head and her neck. She has a little bit of a hood going. And she does the cobra and hisses and, ooh, I'm so mean. But as soon as you pick her up, she's fine. She's really mellow. Uh, Elmo, on the other hand, does not do the cobra move. He is into bluff strikes. Uh, he strikes a lot with his mouth closed. So it's basically, as long as, you, as long as you do not smell like food, these snakes do not bite. But if they're in food mode, food mode they will bite. Um, so uh, if they're in defensive mode, though, they don't bite. They just keep their mouth closed and they hiss and they do a quick strike. And that's just meant to scare you off. Um, and if the cobra doesn't work and if the bluff strikes don't work, the uh, last thing in their bag of tricks is to play dead. Just Google hognose snake playing dead. There are tons of examples on the internet. It's pretty funny. Both the Eastern and the Plains hognose do this behavior, but the Plains, I mean, sorry, the Eastern hognose is much more of a drama queen. So if you look at an eastern hog nose funny, sometimes it'll just roll over and start playing dead. Whereas the plains hog nose, it takes a little bit more than that. Let's see if I can get her. Look at that. Look at her, how fat her neck is. Swallowing this thing. Okay, I'm just going to let it go and really slowly undo the... Uh, there we go. So you can watch the swallowing process. She squeezes her body, causing the mouse to go all the way down to her stomach. Oh, we're going back into cobra mode, are we? Now that you swallowed it. Now, were I to stick my hand in there right now, it would probably get bitten. Because she is still in food mode. Look at that tongue going. She's going, do I have more? Do I get another one? I'm going to have to say, not this time, baby. Not this time. Finish swallowing your mouse. She has grown so much since I got her. So much. You are a pretty girl. Yeah, she's the she's a condomorph het for albino. Elmo is also het for albino, which means if I ever breed them, I don't know if that's ever gonna happen. But if I do, 25% of the babies should be albino. Half will be conda because it's a codominant gene. So if it's in the genome at all, it is expressed. If you get two copies of the conda gene, you'll get something called a super conda. Now a conda morph has a reduced pattern. Elmo has a much more busy pattern on his back. Uh, uh, Cookie Monster here has fewer spots and they're larger. So. The superconda actually eliminates the background pattern altogether. It's a patternless morph, except for the head stamp. Uh, the see her little mask and uh, that she has on her head. She would still have that. Were she a superconda. Uh -huh.